we're continuing on here. We went through and made sure that all our parts and our parts kit are correct, and they are. So now we're working on our seals. Uh, this is the input shaft housing or valve housing. So I already loosened up this one. So this is the dust seal, and there's not much to it. And the new one is flat, okay, but when you install it, this lip is going to bend up. So this is the cup side. The cup side faces out, okay. So, and it's and the whole job here is just to keep dirt from getting in and getting to the next seal, okay. So that goes that way. Now we got a snap ring in here. Let's get that out. Okay, now this seal, this is the one that they're very adamant about when you install it um, because there's really nothing to stop it from just going in too far so what you're supposed to do when you install this seal is you, you, you drive it in and then you get it to where you can just start seeing the snap ring groove then you put the snap ring in and then you use a, a, a driving tool to drive both the seal and the snap ring in at the same time and as soon as the snap ring engages the groove, you stop. You don't go in any farther. Otherwise, the seal, there's a bearing right below, is going to be rubbing on the seal and damage the seal. And then you're going to be right back where you started. Okay. Got it. Okay, so let's put these in the order that they're coming out. Like that. Screwdriver first. Oh, no big deal. <laughs> okay, so, all right, now this one, I mean, it's pretty much a no-brainer. This is the lip side of the seal with the spring. It faces in because the pressure is trying to come out. This thing is rock hard. <laughs> Man, it feels like a solid piece of plastic, so that seal's not doing anything. Okay, so that was in that direction. All right, so then what do we got here? A washer, or is that the bearing? Okay, so now we got the bearing. Let me uh, give you guys a little closer look there. Okay, so that is the back side of the bearing there. Okay, so um, we're gonna see if we can get that tapped out of there. Here's the new bearing that came in the kit. So it's unbranded, no markings, nothing. It, I did try it on the shaft, it is the right bearing. Um, it's just a steering shaft, so it doesn't get a lot of, um, you know, nothing high speed and not a lot of travel over the years. But uh, if this was on a critical component, I don't think I would use this bearing. Um, I mean, it's a Gates kit, but it's probably import, most likely China. Uh, and then it's had some tarnishing on here. I don't know, just, uh, and this should have been, you know, individually bagged or wrapped. So what I did do, I did flush it out good with, with clean solvent, just to, and, and I did get a few little particles of, um, like, uh, like from a rag, okay, uh, that came out. No metal, luckily. So anyways, there's our bearing. Uh, we're going to tap, see if we can tap this old one out. It's down in there. And I've got this little driver tool that happens to fit. Well, it's plastic. We'll give it a try. Oh, yeah. Okay, that was pretty easy. So here's our old bearing. So USA, got a part number. You can see where it's the pattern that it's made. What I'm going to do, I'm going to flush this out. I mean, this is a way better bearing. I'm going to flush this out and look at it and try to, I, th I may put the original bat back in after I have a look. I mean, this, I'm not impressed by this one at all. Okay, let me clean it up and uh, 
let you know what we're going to do. Okay, guys, so I cleaned up our old bearing, and it's in great shape. Um, I mean, you can see some discoloration, um, but there's no um, scratching, no pits, no wear to speak of. Um, and the and it's like night and day difference between the quality of these two bearings. Okay, so if you look at the rollers on this one, they've all got a nice rounded radius edge on on both sides. Can't really see the inside, but they're the same way. Um, the 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 casing is polished, much nicer. Just feels better. This one here, the edges of all the rollers are sharp. Um, the the casing just doesn't feel as nice and then if we look at our input shaft make sure that we're in frame here see the snap ring so the inside of this bearing actually makes contact with that snap ring so this one here it's nice and smooth it's not catching that snap ring because all these rollers have that nice radius put this one in I mean, I can barely turn it. It's it's interfering with that snap ring. There, it's smooth. But right there, it's hitting again. Yeah, so this one ain't going in. We're going to put the original back in. All right, we've got our housing cleaned up. We've got our new parts ready to go. Here's the old original bearing. I put a little lube in there, mainly just so it, it won't rust or anything until we get it put together. Okay, so it goes that way, the blank side facing out, a little driver tool, and okay, there's nothing to locate this as far as a, um, a register down below. So we're just going to get below the snap ring level here. I'm going to do a test fit. Make sure that we're good there. Okay, I think we're good. You can see the grease marks here where the bearing's making contact. So we've got clearance before that snap ring. So that's good. We could actually go a smidge more, but I don't think there's any benefit. And it looks like it looked when we took it apart. Okay. All right. So here's our seal. So this side goes in the flat side out and I, I pre-grease that with a little super lube you could use probably just about anything okay I'm gonna change tools here because I, I don't have a full contact be right back this is one of those bearing seal driver kits you get on Amazon. They're like 25 bucks <laughs> and it's really well made. So if you need one, check it out. Okay. Watching for that snap ring groove. Okay, I think we're ready to 
put this guy in there. Okay, so, ooh, okay, so we're in the groove already. Okay, <laughs> we're okay. Uh, we stopped just in time, so we're we're making contact with the snap ring all the way around with our seal. So we're we're right there, and I'm gonna just do a test fit. I put a little little grease on here just to make sure it goes through that seal without any issues. Okay, and we're bottomed out, and we're making good contact on the shaft. I'm going to look at it under the magnifying glass. Okay. Yeah, we've got good good surface contact. All right, I'll take this back out and we'll put the dust seal in. Here's the old one. So it just kind of takes shape once everything's in. So it just goes like this. Okay, <clears throat> got a different driver. I've got another kit that has these plastic ones and uh, they're actually not bad. <laughs> I don't remember where I got it. It was some online deal. Okay, so this has a much better fit. Okay, I think we got it. Don't want to overdo it. Looks even all the way around. And it's just a dust shield. Okay, good. Sometimes you gotta tap these around a little bit to loosen them up. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, you want to be careful with snap rings. These things can really ruin your day if one flies out and smacks you in the face. Okay, let me get a little screwdriver. See, got a little backup washer there. Okay, so both seals are with the lips down, solid part up, which is not the way the book describes it. I think they, the book has this one the other way to keep the outer one is for dust, the inner one is for the hydraulic pressure. Although, you know, this is pointing down, you know, if the dirt and stuff, I mean, gravity's moving stuff that way. So I, I kind of like it this way because, the, you know, the odds are you're going to have more pressure from the hydraulic fluid trying to get out. All right, let's see how we get this out of there. There is a spacer in between, I can see. All right, got a little slide hammer puller here. She's in there. <laughs> wow. Holy moly. All right, I'm gonna tap it back down. Oh, 
Well, she went right down with one blow. <laughs> Let me uh, grab a little emery paper. I think we just have a ring of rust here that's uh, that it's getting hung up on. Yeah, we do get a little bit of rust here in California. <laughs> it does rain once in a while. <laughs> It's supposed to rain tomorrow. Big time. We'll see. We uh, definitely been short on water. They've been getting rain up north, which is where the fires were, so that's good. I think I think that pretty much put an end to the fire season. Okay, let's put a little juice on there. Try her again. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't knock that down too far. <laughs> I only hit it one time. Camera in one hand, flashlight in the other. So, there's what you got. So there's no, no this is not showing up very well. There's no bearing in there. There we go. It's just a, just a journal. Okay. Maybe if I get the light on the bottom, it might be better. Hey, how's that? Okay. We've been cleaning up our housing and we're finding a few issues. Okay, so here's the first one. So if you guys can see that, maybe it's better without the lights. See, there's a nick right there. And I didn't do that, but somebody who was in here before, that's probably, I'm guessing maybe they were trying to pry the, the, uh, the cover off the top. Um, I don't know how else that would happen. But it did raise a burr here in the bore, so I've got to I've got to clean that up. Uh, all right, and then uh, this here, I mean, there's definitely wear here. Okay, um, this is not a ceiling surface, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, but let me turn this over, and we'll show you the other issue. All right, we turn to our housing over here. So we've got the, you know, in the front here, we've got the, the, the same wear pattern. Uh, and this is the counter force on the, um, the sector arm gear pushes the entire piston assembly toward, the, that, toward that side of the housing. Okay, now there is on the top there, that upper groove, that one's pretty severe. These other ones, they're more just sort of a standard wear pattern, at least that's what I'm calling it. But if you look way in the back here is where the actual hydraulic piston rides. And you see we got a couple of, see if I get the light just right here. We got a couple of nasty scores back there. And uh, yeah, you can pick them up with your fingernail, no problem. So they're, you know, they're fairly, fairly deep. Uh, and we got a couple others back there. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, we're into this far enough now that I mean, we might as well try it. Okay, um, if it doesn't work, we can get a replacement rebuilt unit. They're, oh, they're around 500 bucks or so. Okay, so we have that option. Um, now, I don't know if this happened when I was driving at home. I'm guessing that it probably did because I had 
perfectly working power steering prior to the hose blowing okay so did have to drive about 30 miles home um, you know it still had the residual fluid in here um, but not under pressure or the volume that it would normally have had so it's very possible that that scoring happened because I had to you know I had a few turns that I had to make <laughs> it wasn't straight going all the way uh, so it's very possible that happened uh, during that period okay so I'm gonna come in here with some I got some 1500 grit paper <clears throat> and try to smooth those out as best I can and uh, we're just going to go for it, see what happens. Okay, <clears throat> let me get busy. All right, so I'm going to make another deviation from the kit. So this is the setup that comes in the kit. Okay, so you, you start with a, it's a double lip standard type seal. That goes first, facing toward the uh, interior of the gearbox. Then it has a backup ring. It's actually this one here. This is the backup ring, and it does two jobs. It's the spacer, and it also provides a, a thrust backup for that seal. Okay. And then they have this single lip dust seal. Okay. That goes on top of that. And then that is held down by this um, washer with a, with a larger opening. Okay. So that's the stack up right there, okay? So there's a, and then the snap ring is up here, okay, holding everything in, all right? So the hydraulic pressure is pushing this way, trying to push all this out. So that's what this is for. This backs up the, this seal, and then this one backs up this seal, okay? So the total stack up here, eight, 886 this is called 887 okay so that's the thickness of this stack up okay so when I took this apart it had a different setup so it had the, the full double lip seal then it had a, a backup washer then it had another double lip seal and another backup washer these two washers are identical okay so this is quite a bit less than the 887. It's actually 835, all right? So there's plenty of room to do it this way. And there's nothing below here um, that the seal needs to make contact with as far as the cavity that it goes in. These can go anywhere. So it, what holds, them, holds everything in is the snap ring because it's, the forces are trying to push this out. Okay, so um, I prefer the idea of doubling up on the conventional seals here. Uh, these are double lip seals. Uh, they're, it's, a, it's a pressure seal where this one here is just a dust seal. So I'd rather have double protection on having a fluid leak rather than keeping a little bit of dust and dirt out. Plus, it's, plus this is a double lip seal. So you, you, you've got an outer seal here, all right? So that's what I'm going to go with. I already started one of them in the cavity there. This one here. This one is actually one of the originals that came out, and it's, and it's still in excellent condition. So I'm going to use this one as the outer seal, and we're going to go with the, with the thinner washers here. So that's our plan, and we're sticking to it. All right, this part is not rocket science. You just lube them up and tap them in. I lube the bore up also. Okay. I think we're there. Let's get the snap ring. Okay, well, <laughs> My plan was to put the snap ring in and then just using our driver, just tap it a little bit to get it to seat in and line up perfectly with that snap ring groove. But we are already there. And one thing I like to do is I like to just feel around and just make sure that snap ring is seating all the way around. And also take a screwdriver and, and hit 
I'll, I'll demonstrate here. Just a little tap, just to make sure that that snap ring is actually down there in the groove. All right. Yep. Yeah, we're there. Okay, good. So when this this is under pressure, those seals are going to be pushed up and held in by that snap ring. So I spent a couple hours um, polishing and deburring. I did the best I could on these scratches that are back in there. Uh, started with um, some 180 uh, emery cloth and then uh, worked my way up to uh, 1500 grit and got things as smooth as I can get it. So this is either going to work or it's not going to work. So we're going to, I mean, we're committed now. We're going to go ahead and finish this, put it together. So if it doesn't work, we'll have to go with the rebuilt unit. But uh, we've already got the parts for this far. We might as well give it a shot. All right, this is absolutely the toughest part of the project right here. So I've got our new rings heating up over here in the crock pot. I've been experimenting with the old ones, mainly how I was getting them off of there. I didn't want to cut them off like the instructions recommend, because I wanted to practice a little bit how we're going to get them back on there. So what I found is I got a pill bottle, and this is about an inch and a half ID. And this thing, you got to cut the bottom out. You got to be real careful. I just used a, uh, a Dremel tool with a little um, carbide cutting disc. Just took my time. And look at this, it slips right over. So we're going to put the last one on first, which is way down here. I'm going to put some lube on there. Hopefully it'll, <laughs> it'll make its way on there. And then that will allow us, and these, these have a slight taper to them when they come out of the injection mold. So the idea is when we get our new one, it'll be nice and warm and soft, hopefully, and, we'll, and we're going to lube all this up, we'll be able to just work that down and then just have it drop right into our ring, okay, ring land. All right, I'm not going to film this because this is going to be <laughs> pretty tedious and nerve-wracking, <laughs> but I'll bring you back and I'll let you know whether it's a success or a fail. Thank you.